What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash I don't work your lady. This story's called, It's not my job to haul scrap metal at night, but I did it anyway. It was around 9 p.m. I had just sat down on the couch with a cup of tea after an hour-long struggle to get my six-year-old boy to bed. All of a sudden, there is a tremendous noise out of the front of my house. It sounds like the world is ending, a metal apocalypse. I leap up and run to the front window and squint out into the darkness of my usually quiet blue-collar suburban street. There, across the road, is my neighbor, Johnny. He is dragging 12-foot-long metal beams along the sidewalk, resting one end on the top edge of a big cage trailer, then trying to shove slide the beams down and inside. The noise is unbelievable. I watch for a couple of minutes in disbelief and growing anger as I notice about 50 more metal beams stacked behind him. This is not going to finish anytime soon. Then to top it off, my son wakes up and starts making a fuss. I grab a piece of paper and writes an angry message at Johnny in big block letters. My neighbor Johnny is profoundly deaf, hence the written note. He has lived in that house for all of his 50 years and alone since his mother died a decade ago. He hasn't done so well by himself, I think. His house has fallen into disrepair, and he has hoarded so much scrap metal it has filled his property and flowed over the outside of his wall, encroaching on the sidewalk. I know the mess drives other neighbors crazy, but I don't particularly care. Makes me feel less guilty about not mowing my lawn as often as I should. Apart from the eyesore, he's never bothered me in any way. I've barely had anything to do with him at all over the years, to be honest. At 9 p.m. last night, however, I was spitting mad. Another huge boom echoes outside. Fantasies of physical violence flash through my mind. The blood rage takes me. I grab my angry note, put on my slippers, and storm out the door in my pajamas, straight over to him. I am a tall, heavy-built, pretty mean-looking guy. Johnny is about 5'5 five five and looks like a shrunken version of Zach Galifianakis. My appearance startles him and he looks up at me with a worried face, still holding one end of a metal beam, sweat running down his cheeks. I'm about to unleash on him. I look down at this small, hairy, deaf hobbit man in front of me. I look back across the street at my son watching us from behind the screen door. I look at the angry note in my hand. My anger evaporates and is replaced by something else. I feel ashamed. I consider how he's been deaf since birth and may not even realize how noisy he's being, and I feel even more ashamed. I shove the note in my pocket before he sees it. I point to my chest, then do a weightlifting motion with my hands. His face brightens, and he nods excitedly. I walk over and grab one end of a beam, he grabs the other. I start helping him haul these 90-pound metal beams into his trailer. After 20 minutes, I'm breathing hard, and we finally get to the last one. I feel him squeeze my arm. He's smiling up at me and mouths, thank you, the only word we exchange the whole time. I nod and go home. A couple minutes later, I'm in the bathroom, washing the dirt and sweat away, and my son comes in. He's angry and confused, like a disappointed mob that didn't get to watch the hanging they were promised. Why didn't you shout at him, Daddy? You should have taught him a lesson. He's an idiot. Idiots being the strongest word of my son's vocabulary, I sit him down on the couch and put my arm around him. Cuddle up. I talk to him about the different ways I could have handled that situation, and about neighbors and helping and being kind, and about how you meet all types of people in your life, and the story of the scar by my eye, and how much I regret the times I've been aggressive in my life. He's silent afterwards and seems to be deep in thought as I carry him back to bed. I drove past Johnny today and he waved and did a bicep flex at me. Like, hey, aren't we the two metal hauling muscle men of the street? I couldn't help but chuckle. Well, that, that was wholesome. And I really appreciate how this, uh, how the Redditor here, he really took the opportunity to teach his son a lesson about not immediately resorting to violence and how helping someone out can really benefit both of you guys because the guy wanted the stuff in the trailer and he wanted him to shut the hell up. 
This story's called, I almost got in trouble with a manager I've never worked under. First post here, I was directed here after telling a friend about this. So, a few months ago, I stopped working at a large chain retail or grocery store. I had worked there for around two years. They don't necessarily have a set uniform. Each department wears something slightly different but still with the store logo. Sometimes, if you're just filling in or are a new starter or temp without a uniform, you can just wear smart clothes, but still with the name tag. Cut to earlier today. I had just been to an interview, so I was wearing somewhat smart clothing, blouse and black trousers, and had popped into said store for some groceries on my way home. I'm only planning on getting a few things so I don't take a basket. I'm a bit of a neat freak when it comes to stores, so as I was looking for products, I'd also straighten the shelves a little. You can't tell me nobody else does this. Suddenly, a middle-aged woman approached me and asked me where she could find hemp milk. Oh, sorry, I don't work here, but I believe it's in aisle 24 or 26? Already annoyed, she says, Listen, I've had a busy day and I don't have time for your games. I can see you straightening shelves. You work here. Now, take me to the hemp milk. It's for my daughter's husband. He's got a milk allergy and I just want some hemp milk. I understand, but I don't work here. Stop messing with me, you fat cow. I've seen you working here. I just witnessed you straightening the shelves. I told you I have had a busy day. Now take me to the milk so I can go home. I honestly don't know where it would be. I'm sorry, but I need to get home myself. I move around her to carry on with my day, but as I do so, a manager I don't recognize walks down the aisle. The lady screams at him about me not helping her. I turn to him to explain that I don't work here, but before I can say anything, she's shouting and pointing at me. And there are customers around us watching what's going on. The manager is obviously new to the store and is likely embarrassed at the other customers looking at us. So asks the lady and I if we could come to the back of the store. This is normal. There's a couple of security rooms at the rear of the store for interviewing irate customers and staff that had broken rules, lost money, etc. I try to explain through her shouting that I don't work there, but I follow along anyway. The manager asks the lady to wait in one room whilst he opens the one next to it and waves me inside. Before I can speak, he starts saying that as a new starter, I should be trying to make a good impression on the company and that I can expect to be fired for ignoring and being rude to a customer like that. Before I entered, one of the supervisors I used to know well comes into the hallway the rooms are on, it connects to the shop floor to the colleague toilets, and sees me. He immediately starts chatting, asking how I am, etc. He then realizes I'm going into a security room and questions it. I explain that a customer thinks I'm being a rude employee and that I haven't been able to get a word in edgewise to explain to this manager that I don't work here. The old supervisor immediately starts laughing at the predicament, saying that I left months ago, and the manager, still holding the door, flushes bright red with embarrassment. He starts apologizing profusely to me, stating that he's new here and hasn't had a chance to meet the colleagues properly. He even offers me vouchers. Luckily, I'm in pretty good spirits and laugh it off. Poor guy seemed stressed beyond belief. I left to go to the shop floor as he went in to speak to the customer. So I don't know how she took the news, but hopefully he came out alive. Isn't it a fantastic thing when you can just laugh something off? Because, you know, uh, I said you know again. I say that a lot and you guys point that out in the comments and now I'm self-conscious. This story's called Operation Karen. After an amusing stint of Reddit reading videos, I discovered this sub and thought you'd appreciate this. My first job after university was as a software consultant under a company that handled large, bespoke software solutions for big finance companies, banks, and government. After about a year with a number of projects under my belt, I was sent on my way to a new client, an offshore admin department of a major UK bank to work on some bespoke project for the banking system. This was approaching 10 years ago. This might be a gray area for the sub, but think of my role like the IT equivalent of asking a plumber to fix your crapper. The building had maybe 30 to 40 employees and rows of desks down a long room with multiple little offices or meeting rooms adjacent. 
I turn up all suited and smart, meeting the manager and discussing the project. To everyone there, I'm just some early 20s youngster being escorted to an interview or something. I turn up the next day, looking all greenhorn and being introduced to the IT department. The first days were pretty normal, people helping me with logins, desks, the basics of a new office job to any onlooker. I'd keep speaking to the same few IT department guys and joining them on their smoke breaks. That's when a mild case of the Karen started to seep in. I was introduced to her at some points, but I had no idea who she was or what she did, and I think that irked her. Rather than ask her colleagues and find out what I was doing, she assumed I'm just the new kid and I wasn't towing company line. This started with a joking, I think the new guy should do the tea runs. British office after all, I obliged. I would offer tea at least once a day to her row of desks as well. The petty power play kept increasing with things like the Friday bacon run and, Oh, if you're going to the printer, can you scan this for me? She was trying to show herself as a senior and that she was my superior. I think the best one was her inviting me to a company meeting she led on current business issues. I'd been invited into many meetings before because part of my job is understanding the client's business. Then she started noticing things. I'd stroll in at 10.30 a.m. I'd leave at 4 p.m. I might have two-hour lunch breaks. I was too casual with my sharp jeans and untucked black shirt, even though the IT department guys wore ratty jeans, trainers, and t-shirts. I'd also walk outside to take personal phone calls frequently. I was a consultant who attended our own company meetings and supporting all my other projects for other clients. I'm not on their payroll, I charge them for my time. You see, Karen was a senior in the operations team, the group who was in charge of making sure all the menial business tasks are managed and clicking buttons on bespoke software that my colleagues made to basically keep this crap show afloat. Some of the guys in that team actually do keep their place together, but I don't think she did. And that's when I got accosted in the kitchen. I don't think you're taking this job very seriously. I've been keeping track of your tardiness and I'm sure others have noticed too. I've just submitted a full briefing to your manager to let him know. In this case, the IT department actually spends 50% of their time away from their desks. So she thinks I'm playing them when they aren't around. In reality, I'm there when they're there. I'm not an employee, Karen. I work for company. Amusingly, she never once engaged as a human being beforehand. This shocked her. In a huff, she walks out. I think she's angry that she's in the dark, and I'm sure she's just sent a serious case of the Karen mail. Problem is, I'm under a non-disclosure agreement because I'm working on a system that has a rather large access to the information of all the banking hardware and software and our policy is to not talk about it with anyone not directly involved. One of her team was my go-to guy for access and details. To her, my account was a basic no-access account. I'd log in, then remote onto a virtualized workstation that was just out of her jurisdiction, managed by the IT guys. Here's the kicker. I think there was office politics about the email she sent out, but I didn't have a company email address to join in on the fun. My IT colleagues had actually noted all the time she approached me to do menial tasks and new boy errands, to which I charged £250 per hour, under admin or contingency budgets. She racked up enough costs to easily cover hiring a junior employee. The reason why she wasn't informed, as I found out later that year for a new project, was that I was building a centralized intranet service that managed all the banking server information, hardware details, licenses, permission systems, and so forth in a way to hand control back to the qualified IT guys and severely lighten up the redundant parts of the operations team who are, frankly, unqualified to manage banking infrastructure. She was in her early 50s, pushing close to a six-figure salary to run through a daily checklist she wrote in Excel of jobs to delegate out to others. Essentially got paid a lot to do nothing, for years on end. Being a consultant is a funny job, a tough one at times, some people treat you like their knight in shining armor as you fix all their crap or improve their daily lives. Others see you as scammers and others see you as the horsemen of their incompetency. Karen, however, couldn't see two feet in front of her superiority complex 
Until a naive 23-year-old automated her job. She wasn't there a few months later when I came back to build upon the previous work. Wow, Karen just got obliterated. This story is called Being Mistaken as a Waiter at My Grandfather's Funeral Reception. Not exactly a store, but still relevant? So this happened about five years ago, when my grandfather passed. After the funeral, there was a buffet and reception at a local restaurant. I had finished my food, and so I was heading up to the window where the kitchen was, as I saw some waiters bussing dirty dishes to the window, so I figured it would be helpful if I just took my plate there. As I'm walking over, a woman steps in front of me and blocks my path. She quickly dumps several plates on my pile and very confidently says, Is it helpful if I just hand you all of our plates? The woman was my uncle's latest girlfriend. I calmly replied, Um, I don't work here, but I can run these to the kitchen for you, I guess? I was trying to be polite. She gave me a puzzled look and asked, Then what are you doing at this reception? I paused for a moment, baffled that she asked me why I was at my own grandpa's funeral. I didn't respond and just walked away. She sits back down next to my uncle and points to me and gives me a nasty look as she is talking to my uncle, presumably asking him who I was. He came up to me a few minutes later and apologized that she had assumed I worked there and just threw a bunch of dishes at me. I saw her outside as we were leaving the restaurant. She came up to me again and said, that was very rude of you to walk away from someone who is talking to you, young man. I was about 15-ish at the time. It's ruder to give someone else your dirty dishes, especially when that someone just lost their grandfather. But I guess no one's ever taught you any manners. I said as I was climbing into my mom's van, I never saw her again. My uncle dumped her basically right after that. Alright guys, I'm gonna say something potentially snotty and... You know what? No, I don't apologize. This is who I am. I'm kidding. I'm sorry if I'm rude. But if you're dating someone and you go to a family sort of event, you know, that you probably have no business being there, then please, I don't know how else to say this, but know your place. <laughs> For instance, if you're going to someone's funeral, um, it might help to know who their relatives are. Okay, actually, first of all, if you don't know the family, then why are you even going to a funeral? Because that's a rather intimate sort of thing. Unless it's a serious relationship, I say just don't even come. Like, don't bring someone like your freaking girlfriend of two hours to your grandpa's funeral. That's just weird. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.